uh, hello, uh, this is your video guy. Ah, pleased to meet you, video guy. You come highly recommended. Oh, it's nothing really, it's uh, oh, my name. Oh, what's nothing? This is not trivial. Oh, I, I have needs to manage. Can you fill them, video guy? Yeah, I... with the video camera. For an event this Thursday. Oh, yeah, totally. And do you have lenses? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what's a camera without lenses, right? Uh, do you have powerful lenses? You see, these people are big. Like CEOs, COOs, like executives? No, 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 no. They're huge. They're sumo wrestlers. Now, do you have big lenses? Oh, yeah, a uh, yeah, uh, wide <laughs> lens. I'd have to rent. Mm, and a stable tripod mount. Well, yeah, of course, very. Because when they walk into the room, they shake the very foundations. Oh, but really? Of course, they're sumo. Right, yeah. Um, you know, um, so how many hours do you think you're gonna need me? What? How many hours uh, for the shoot? Because I, you know, I kind of need to. Oh. Uh, uh. What? What is time, really? Excuse me. What? I mean, it's it's a man-made construct. Shackles we put on ourselves to bind us to the circle of industrial diligence. Okay, I'm not. I don't follow. I'm not sure. You see, the sumo wrestles with time constantly to push it out of the circle. You, video guy, need to be the sumo. Okay. How much is this going to cost, video guy? Uh, co yeah, okay, great. So, um, uh, I'm gonna say one day. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, the lenses, right, the, the wide lenses. Very big, yes. That's gonna be 1,400 uh, for the day. Hello? $1,400? Yeah? Man, I can shoot this with my phone. Oh my god. Welcome to another episode of Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Filmmaking. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind in this whole process uh, of dealing with estimating and bidding is that people are not vending machines. So a vending machine is black and white. If it's a buck fifty uh, for a bag of chips, if I put in less than a buck fifty, I don't get the chips. If I put in more than a buck fifty, I get the chips and I get my change. It's exactly a buck fifty. It's black and white. With people, it's not exactly the case because we're dealing with human beings, we're dealing with communication, we're dealing with psychology and we've got our, you know, a uh, prefrontal cortex brain on top of a reptilian brain and all this, you know, crazy weird stuff. And maybe that person quit smoking that day or had a bad day or had a great day or who knows? There's all kinds of things uh, at play. We know when we go into a store, Target, a restaurant, coffee shop, whatever, the prices are listed somewhere. Um, and that seems kind of black and white, but it's not always the case, particularly uh, you know, if there's a sale, if it's a coupon, if it's a small mom and pop coffee shop and you're short a nickel and they just let you go because you're a good customer. So it's a little gray. You go into an antique store, I'll just pick up an item. I've had this happen all the time and I'm just looking at it and the owner goes, hey, that's 10 bucks, but I'll give it to you for eight. Okay. So there's negotiating and, and all of that kind of stuff. So keep in mind that people aren't vending machines. So let's talk about estimating. Client gives you a call, they've got an eight hour event they want you to come tape, okay? It's pretty cut and dry, eight hours. You need at least an hour probably up front to get there, get set up, get the lay of the land. And an hour after, maybe even more, but let's just say an hour, to download your footage to whatever hard drive they give you so they can take the footage with them. So that's 10. Okay, so we got 10 hour gig. So, and that's you, one person, times whatever, times 10, times whatever your rate is, your hourly rate. So now the question is, do you know what your hourly rate is? What's important is if you don't already know what your hourly rate is, is to figure it out. That is to find out, okay, well, what are the going rates in your area? If a client comes into town, what can they expect if they call three different cameramen or videographers or editors or whatever it is that you do? So how do you do that? You pretty much have to meet and talk to and ask other people in your industry locally. Or you may ask other producers who have done jobs and say, well, what are the rates that uh, you are normally charged for this type of work? So someone will say, hey, here's my rate, you know, 
um, in San Francisco, $85 an hour as a videographer. Uh, but I found that it can kind of be a range. Uh, even though someone will say this is their rate, there's a high and a low. And it, for a number of reasons. One is you may have a client, like if I get a corporate client, enterprise level, uh, a huge company, has a big event going on, um, multiple camera shoot, guess what? I'm gonna be charging on the high end because they can afford it and it's almost what they expect. They just want the, the best people, best equipment, they just want it handled. They don't want to negotiate on price or do any of that kind of stuff. They just want it handled. And it's kind of what you are expected to bring to it. It's gonna be a long day. It might be 10 hours where you're also shooting B-roll or shooting a party afterwards. They expect the best and that's what they're gonna pay for. Doesn't mean you don't do good work on the other gigs because on the other end of the spectrum is if it's a nonprofit, for example. Well, I'm not gonna charge my high rates for them. I'm gonna charge you know, on the low end uh, because I know they're a nonprofit. They can't afford it. They have to raise their money every year. And this might even be their fundraiser that I'm going to film or a video I'm helping create for them to help them raise funds. So in that case, for a company like that, I'm making a choice. And this is where the gray part, right? This is the non-bending machine. This is where the psychology and all that comes in and, you know, doing what's right, so to speak, um, or what I feel is for myself is to charge them on the low end of my rate. Now, what if they ask you to do them a favor? Do it for free, pro bono. What do you think about that, huh? Now, initially, as I say, it's kind of like, no way. And there are people out there who are like adamant, don't do work for free. But I have to be honest, it's kind of unrealistic. And here's why. Um, nothing really is free. Back in the day when I was a key, a uh, key grip, at times I would, you know, my, I think my day rate in the 90s was like 500 for 12. Um, but sometimes I'd do $50 for, for, for 12 for a day on an independent film or short or something because I was doing a favor for somebody. Or there was a first AC who was trying to make the jump to being a DP. So, of course, I'm going to do the favor for him because if he ends up becoming a DP and doing commercials and music videos and whatnot that we did back in the day, I wanted to be his go-to key grip. So I'm doing a favor in order to get a favor. There's sort of a transaction. A favor is a transaction. It's not for free. Uh, it could be um, a nonprofit that you want to help out. It's Buzz, that's you texting me uh, that you went to see Wonder Woman. Thanks for fucking up my shot. It could be pro bono work you actually want to do for some cause that you believe in. Uh, for example, uh, Spuds wanted us to do, and we did, a video for a fundraiser for the elementary school that his son went to uh, because they had to raise money to buy chairs, of all things. Like, that's the, they couldn't get money to buy chairs from the state, city, federal, no, they had to do a fundraiser. And, of course, you know, we did that. And, yeah, they mentioned the name of the company. I think we had our branding in there at the end, not the beginning, you know. It, it wasn't about the marketing, it was about, you know, trying to um, do something, right, that helped these kids in the school. Uh, and yeah, there were people there who, you know, saw it and might have been potential customers. So it wasn't 100% altruistic. But either way, there's a transaction. And even if it was completely 100% altruistic, it was a good feeling we got of using our skills to, for a cause that we believed in. Another example is, Maybe you need something for your reel, like a demo video, and you want to get in good with the startup that doesn't quite have enough funding. Maybe they've got a small round of seed money at an incubator and they need a demo video. Welcome to the hacker hostel. And it's clear that if they get more funding, they'll have the money to do more videos. So like working with that friend of mine who's the first AC, wanted to be DP, you get in good with them ahead of time. Now, they have to pay for any equipment rental or um, actors or craft service or anything like that. Uh, you don't want to spend any money at all. It's just your time and your equipment. But you get something for your reel and a connection. So really, bartering all that 
it's all up to you what you're willing to do. Now let's go back to that client gig, the, the eight hours, it's really 10. Um, and let's say our rate is $75 an hour, okay? Now I did a video on creating budget forms. That's these kind of formulas I'm gonna talk about now that's used in the industry if you're not familiar with it. The formula is all about how many people or units that is, times the time, unit of time, hours, days, whatever, or flat rate, uh, times the rate for that unit of time. So we know that 75 an hour, so it's one person, me or you, whoever, the video guy, um, for 10 hours, one times 10 times 75, right? 75 an hour, so that's 750, right? Uh, let's say they say, hey, we need a second video guy. And you call up a buddy and say, hey, look, this is the rate I'm doing, Can, are you cool with that rate? Uh, and they say, yes, hey, let's say the rate's normally 85, but you tell them, look, I'm doing 75 for me, can you do me a favor here? They don't, they're not working that day, sure, what the hell, they've never worked with you before. You're, giving, you're putting money in their pocket. And they're saying, sure, I'll lower my rate from 85 to 75. Not a problem. So that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? So anyways, that's two people times unit of time, 10 hours, times 75. And there's the math. Some people, particularly camera, will only do a day rate and maybe even a half rate. Now what that is is, let's say a client calls you and says, look, I've... Um, I've got a five, I've got a four hour conference. Uh, I, I got enough money for five hours at that rate. Can, can you do it? Now, some people will say, well, no, because if I go there for five hours and do this gig in the morning into the afternoon, well, I, I lose the second half of the day. I can't take another gig unless the times, you know, work out just right. That one's in the morning and one's in the afternoon. And they'll only do a day rate. Some people will have a half day rate. Um, we've had clients where we only needed to come in for literally an hour or two hours to shoot a really quick interview. Now, in that case, there's no way in the world I'm going to change, charge them a half or even a full day rate. There are people who that's all they will do. They will not get out of bed for less. And that's good on them that they have enough work and enough clients to do that. Um, but for us, there's a little bit more going on and here's what it is, which is we're, we're a video company, right? We're not just a camera guy. So if I go to a client and I shoot for two hours at their offices, uh, I may also be editing that job or not. I've got another job we're editing. When we come home, I've got work to do that I'm getting paid for, billable hours. So it's actually to my advantage to, when I can, bill just the hours I'm working with that client. No travel time, no half day, no full day rate. They're going to hire me more often because I'm reasonable and working with them for what they want. And I'm not really losing any money. I've got other work that I can do. So basically, it makes us, because we're a small uh, video production company, a little bit more competitive. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. Now let's talk about equipment rental. What do you charge your clients for your gear? Particularly, you know, if it's a day of shooting and you're bringing your Canon 5D, your C100 or higher, your Sony. Um, the, so there it's gonna be based on, well, what are the going rates in your area? What are the other videographers that you're competing with charging for their equipment rental. Now, realize that is who you're competing with, not borrowed lenses, not you know your local camera rental place. Those are all gonna be pretty cheap. I think a C100 Mark II is either 100 or I think it's $200 for a whole week from borrowed lenses. I mean, that's without lenses. Um, but realize you're gonna be a little bit higher than that. That's because you're, you know, you're not having to go and deal with checking equipment out. Uh, you're not dealing with having to put that equipment through its paces and make sure that it's working and all that. You're using equipment that you already use and maintain, including your lenses, everything. Uh, you know that equipment, you test that equipment, you maintain that equipment, and so you're bringing them the value of a full package that's ready to go without any 
issues for the client. It's just good to go. I need you for a day with your camera, here you go. How do you find out what the rates are locally? It's kind of the same as we talked about with finding what the local day rates are, is you gotta talk to people. Might be a little easier because there are a lot of you know guys with camera, uh, uh, grip lighting, cargo truck, that kind of a thing, where you can find the rates online on their site. And they'll say, well, here's the day rate for this package, this package, here's the lenses, here's the other things. Uh, that they list. It is pretty important, you know, to know, you know, what the lay of the land is, what the competition is, all that other kind of stuff. Um, also because, you know, and this happens with all of us, other people in the industry call me up and hire us when they need an extra guy and we do the same thing. You also want to think of it too as kind of like, you know, if you uh, opened up a diner a few blocks from another one, but all your prices were 50% higher, even though the food was exactly the same, you're going to kind of have some problems with customers. You got to know what the lay of the land is regarding what is charged or the range that is charged for uh, a service and rental and, and whatnot. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Leave uh, any comments. Would love to hear what you have to say. Even if you think I'm wrong, I might have missed something. I talk to people all the time who have other a valuable input outside of my experience. Gently tap that like button if you did like it. And if you don't like it, tell us too. You know, hey, it's part of the deal. Subscribe uh, if you'd like to uh, get notifications uh, or hit the bell too. I think we'll have to give, help you get notifications. So we'll see you on the next one.